Hey, with a Yes, the old top hat and morning suit was the go all those years ago, and for one, I'm pretty pleased it's gone, that fashion statement. <laughs> There's a few piff helmets there too, goodness me. That's, uh, very old footage, isn't it? But of course, that's how old this race is. Older, in fact, than the Melbourne Cup, the Victoria Derby, Amy's Victoria Derby, and there's the shot from the light ship, the Whitman's Chockey's light ship, which we're using for the first time, and there's some more of the roses wherever you look, wherever you go. You can't go past the roses. Simi Bailey does just stop and smell them. Well, as I mentioned, the official opening ceremony is about to commence. Let's go down to the members and Rob Gaylor. appear to have any audio there at the moment unfortunately we'll try and pick it up for you from uh, Rob but uh, Peter Donegan is with me and that beautiful choir have been in it you would have heard more of them than I did uh, they sounded fab fantastic in my earpiece absolutely terrific a wonderful way to start the uh, carnival Tim and what we're seeing now is the trophies for the four major races being handed over from the sponsors Amy of course the sponsor mm. of the Victoria Derby the oldest classic race in Australia the Foster's Melbourne Cup uh, on Tuesday also we have the Thursday race, the Crown Oaks, and the Chrysler Stakes on Saturday. Uh, the Big Mile race, which has had a number of sponsors, and Chrysler taking over, and there's the trophy for that race as well. Four magnificent trophies for four great races, Tim. Yes, absolutely, and we'll be seeing... Uh, here is uh, David Burke, uh, BRC chairman, coming to talk to us. And we're trying to get uh, some audio for you at home, but uh, don't appear to be having much luck. But that's exactly what's going on in a time-honoured uh, tradition. Yeah, we talk about the Derby. It is older than the Melbourne Cup. Mm. Uh, started in, I think, 1855. So there's yeah. so much tradition. And uh, it is $1 million for the first time this year. Yeah. And of course, a uh, bit of, well, it's not really trivia. I'm sure you all know that uh, last year, Gay was the first female trainer to win the Derby. And uh, what do you think? Can she do it again? No, I don't think she can today. No. I think it'll be Bart Cummings win uh, number six in the Victoria mm. Derby. Interesting sidelight to that Derby last year. Nothing like a date in octagonal, of course, clash last year. Today is the first time they've clashed uh, back at Flemington after that. All right, we've spoken about the Derby. Uh, let's get a little update on how they're betting on the great race. Here's Tim Dossett. Thanks very much, Tim. Yes, well, the uh, plunge in Sydney on Intergaze may have siphoned through here to Flemington. The word is around that Intergaze is going to open up a lot shorter than pre-post market. They said about four to one. One, but the tip is it's going to open up a lot shorter. Of course, Alpha is the one that will open up the outright favourite. A big tip, though, on course is for an improved showing from number 12 in the derby, and that is Tom Bowler. So maybe it might get the marbles. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> get, the, that one up. Yeah, get the marbles or get the chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I don't think I could even estimate how many champagne corks pop here during the week. It could almost be as much money as is wagered down in that betting ring where Tim Cossage is. So that's where we found Lynn Talbot, outside the famous champagne bar. I am outside the famous champagne bar. I've been very good, though, Tim, so far. <laughs> don't bet on it that I'll be good all day, though. But look, I have standing with me Charlie Brown, the uh, designer of this outfit here, and in fact, the live wire of the fashion industry. Hi, Lynn. How are you? Great to have you here today. Are you enjoying yourself? I'm having the greatest time. The weather is so fantastic. Now, tell us about the designs you've seen. You are judging fashions on the field later in the week. What have you spotted so far? I've seen, well, obviously, I've seen a lot of suits, a lot of black and white, and yellow has been a very popular colour so far. Now, it is the traditional men's day. How are the guys going? Well, I love the fact that they've, a lot of them are wearing hats. And I love the fact that I'm seeing a lot of boutonniere, cornflower boutonnieres. Terrific. Now, you have been in, in the industry for 15 years now, and you've had your own label that's doing exceptionally well for two years. What do you attribute the su success to? A lot of hard work, a lot of very, very nice consumers, and a lot of good buyers. <laughs> that's good. Um, you're best known for your fabrics, I would say. I use a lot of technical high-tech fabrics um, with a lot of stretches and a lot of fabrics that um, help the not-so-perfect body. Oh, well, we can't all be built like Elle McPherson, can we? <laughs> so, uh, yes, thank you for your designs and thank you for uh, agreeing to, to judge uh, fashions on the field and good luck with it. What's your tip for the derby? Mustang Ranch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Back to you, Tim. I suspect she just likes the sound of that uh, horse, Mustang Ranch. I'll tell you what, uh, 
It's a hell of a race. In fact, the first race is not far away. We've been getting caught up in waxing lyrical about the roses and everything else. First race is only about uh, 25 minutes away. The Carbine Club, of course, first race of many during Melbourne Cup week. Well, now, we mentioned earlier the fashion competition for you at home to take part in, and here is exactly how you do it. You can be a winner in our Derby Day fashion competition just by calling 0055 606 58 if you know the right answer to this question. What is traditionally regarded as Derby Day attire for men? Is it A, the dinner suit, or B, the morning suit? Two winners will be chosen from callers with the correct answers, and they will each receive a great prize of $1,000 in fashions from Suzanne's. Serving 0055 606 58, and you can call right up until 4 o'clock Eastern Summer Time. Winners will be announced after race 7 today. Yes, two of them. All the best. Get on the phone and have your say. We'll take a break. Back soon. How would you like... Welcome back to an absolutely picture-perfect day at Flemington, Australia's international race course on Amy Victoria Derby Day. And the first race, as we mentioned, not far away at all, the Carbine Club, due to jump out of the barriers at 12.05. There's another shot from our uh, newly acquired little toy this year. We've got lots of new toys. When the racing starts, you'll see them too. But that's from the light ship, from the Whitman's Chockey's light ship. And doesn't that give us another dimension and there it is up in the sky for us taking pictures and we thank them very much for lending it to us this year it gives us another dimension well a lot of things go on around this race course and one of them of one of them of course is the merchandising of all the paraphernalia that goes with Flemington and the Melbourne Cup here's Timmy Bailey well folks we've found the only punter in Australia who hopes he actually loses the shirt off his back Gary March head of merchandise here at Flemington you get through plenty of it, mate. Oh, we certainly do, <laughs> Timmy. I mean, today uh, the weather gods have smiled on us, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get through about three or four thousand caps over the carnival. You know, last week Cox Plate we sold out, and uh, we expect to do the same over the carnival this year. It's a new phenomenon, isn't it? Uh, racing merchandise, like even the jockeys. There's one of uh, Damien Oliver. Are becoming celebrities, and people obviously are buying buying the shirts yeah we're getting knocked over the you know the jockeys have become real st superstars like the uh, you know the AFL footballers and the rugby league players and you know if Damien happens to win aboard uh, Doremus again this year well then look out I think we'll get swamped so now we're looking forward to it if the punter has a say what's he buying this year what's he keen on Oh, I think they're pretty keen on the caps that we've got and, you know, all the, the polo shirts are always really big. We, we go through an enormous amount of polo shirts, but, you know, this sort of stuff, the, uh, you know, the caricature type things, they're going really well for us, you know, and that's been a new phenomenon for us. So. All right, well, I hope we see you walking around without that on your back and you've sold it later in the day. Right, thanks, Timmy. <laughs> Thank see you later. Back to you, Tim. Thank you, young Bailey. You know, this carnival, this spring carnival, is really the celebration of an entire nation. But if there's one man who epitomises what the land of opportunity can bring you, it's this Mornington trainer, Jim Marconi, who arrived on our shores some 40 years ago. Then Celius and Taller's running on. When people talk about horsepower, you can excuse Jim Marconi if, for just a moment, he thinks of engines, not thoroughbreds. That's because Jim wins cars with the frequency that most other trainers win races. Last year, the millionaire builder on Victoria's picturesque Mornington Peninsula picked up three of them. That's right, three. As part of the Victorian Owners and Breeders Incentive Scheme, known as Bobus, motor vehicle manufacturer Nissan gave a car for the leading breeder, a car for the leading owner, and a car for the leading trainer. Jim won the lot. I think a Nissan got uh, more mile, mileage out uh, for me winning all three than uh, if it was individual, because whatever I got, uh, you know, people, you know, so I hear the Nissan man. But if Jim has an eye for a car, he also has an eye for a horse. His success last season was just the latest in a long line of credits Marconi has accumulated since arriving from Italy for what was to be a two-month visit. That was 40 years ago. 
He couldn't speak a word of English and he knew nothing about horse racing. Just guessing game. Right. And I like uh, not the other thing I've done, and I just throw myself in, hoping for the best. His critics will say he's been lucky, but he's been lucky too often for it to be just luck. Rancho Ruler, Cossack Prince, Equatorial, and his most famous horse, Taras Bulba, are just a few of the feature race winners he's bought or bred in his do-it-yourself career. Having started as an owner with horses trained by Tommy Smith and George Hanlon, Jim decided he could do it just as well himself. I didn't want uh, you know, to put my money where I'm going to control. You see, all the way my, where my money go, I want to be able to control it. When he applied, he was refused a license by the BRC, who told him he didn't have the experience and should pay for his horses to be trained by others. Uh, because I was a builder, they told me I can apply every three months, uh, so I keep applying, uh, but uh, I'm a very persistent person. Even now, Jim has to fight the prejudice of people who believe he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, probably jealousy. You see, I come out from a blue as a builder. Uh, see. But uh, you find that in uh, uh, framing, I got critical. I got critical. Tommy Smith I got criticized. You see, anybody successful, uh, you have to be criticized. But being an owner and breeder as well as a trainer has its advantages because now he doesn't have to listen to anyone else. You see, I got no honor pressure. And, uh, and uh, so I'll do it when I think is uh, the right time. One of the hundreds, no thousands of characters of the turf is uh, Mr. Marconi. There's the horses for the first race. So you know that Melbourne Cup Spring Carnival Week is about to begin. The Carbine Club stakes at 12.05. Well, Sandra Sully has a guest in our marquee who knows an awful lot about facts and figures, but Sandra, does he know anything about tipping horses? Can't hear anything. Gary Morgan joins <laughs> us. Yes, I'm not quite in the marquee, I'm just outside of the members' car park, and I have found uh, the ever-popular and controversial Gary Morgan looking very dashing in your... Um morning suit there. Now, Thank have you, you ever done any research in, in relation to horses? Oh yes, we do the uh, National Tourism Monitor where we uh, find out why people go to different places for different holidays and of course Victoria is very popular for its sporting events such as the Melbourne Cup and the Grand Final um, and that's one of the uh, areas of research we cover all the time. Well we all know and love the Melbourne Cup and we're sure everyone loves to watch it and you can confirm that people actually do come to Melbourne for this and, and love coming to Australia to see the Cup. Oh absolutely, it's one of the great attractions of Australia is the Melbourne Cup and uh, the Melbourne Cup Carnival and that's what we're here for today to have a good time. Now you're here on the first day of the Spring Carnival, you're intending to come most, most days this week? Just Cup Day also, I don't think Oaks Day, we've got too much work to do. And you, you decided to get dressed up today, is it a traditional thing for you? It is obviously for Derby day but you like to get into the swing of things not well, many of the men actually join the ladies and uh, and put in a bit of effort well i think you should get dressed up for the occasion it's uh, a wonderful day and i think you should be dressed uh, how appropriately now have you done research in terms of who's going to win in these races this afternoon i think these are the tips we really need tim oh, i can't help you on that um, no? No, we do research on more serious subjects like uh, how many people barrack for the Sydney Swans or how many people are going to vote for Pauline Hanson. They're the sort of things we do. Oh, I know you've got some controversial figures coming out on that. Just, just tell us quickly what they are. Well, on this week's bulletin, we showed that 18% of Australians would vote for Pauline Hanson if a Senate election were held today. And uh, that would mean that uh, if she put together a party, uh, they would control the Senate. But back to the serious issue at hand. Good luck today. I hope you uh, win lots of money and we'll see you back here for Cup Day. Thank you very much. Back to you, Tim. Sandra, thank you. And at a later stage today, Sandra will have Priscilla Presley and many others with her. We'll take a break and we're racing very soon. Don't leave us. day at Flemington and the crowd is really building up in fact I've only been in here out of uh, the outside area for about half an hour and there are thousands here thousands and thousands and more will build up as the day goes on I'm going to have a quick chat to him because I knew he was coming to the races today one of our great swimmers Scotty Miller g'day thanks Tim nice to have you here good to be here I was you know was a plan to come down here after the Olympics and yeah. uh, missed the last few years so making the most of it well congratulations I know you wanted a gold one but uh, everyone swum very well yeah, we had a good team, you know, we started off a bit slowly and we, we came home with 12 medals and two gold, you know, we got four silver and uh, five or six bronze, so it was a good effort. Now tell me about this really interesting thing you're doing, skin swimming, what's it, what's it all about? Oh, that's um, 
that's a meet that's coming up in about three weeks and they're flying over six of the best flyers in the world and you know, believe it or not, we've got three of them in Australia with myself, Michael Klim and Jeff Huger, which is a, a young right. Queenslander just coming up. And um, six race down the first lap and the person that comes last gets knocked out and there's five. You oh, do one so every it's two like a knockout series. Yes, yeah, one every two minutes and the last person standing gets all the money. I bet you're looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm, not quite, I'm not too fit at the moment, but <laughs> I think yeah. the incentive of the money will bring yeah, out the best of me. You keep off the champagne today. <laughs> Funny of it. <laughs> Thanks for coming in to see us. Thanks, Tim. Scotty Miller. All right, here's what we're here for. Time to go racing. And the first is about to come up. Countdown, of course. There it is. There's our count. There's our little... I haven't seen that yet because I've been outside. I haven't seen a monitor. There's our countdown to the uh, Amy Victoria Derby. Two hours, 51 minutes. Make your own fun with the seconds. Time to go racing. So here's Pete and Jen down in the mountain yard. Thank you, Tim. And what a scene it is down here. A sea of colour before the first of uh, 33 races over the carnival. And it's the Carbine Club Stakes at five minutes after 12. Isn't this a wonderful scene? Oh, it is a wonderful scene. And the crowd is just absolutely building up around the mountain yard here. A lot of excitement. And I'm sure it's going to be a great week of racing. Scratchings from the first of five Litmus, 12 Godina and 15 Ironstone. And there is a late riding change in race one. Number three, cool choice to be ridden by Brett Preble, replacing Simon Marshall, who's stuck in traffic. Let's have a look at Lord Ted, one trained by Lee Freeman. There's a bit of a whisper about him, Dent. Yes, there is quite a big whisper about this fellow. This fellow had his first run for Lee Freeman last start. He showed no early speed, but he really did get home extremely well. I know that uh, the New Zealanders are saying, keep an eye on this horse when he gets to Melbourne, so definitely watch the betting on this fellow. He's probably there with a chance. West Point number two is one of Gay Waterhouse's. has only had the four runs, and to me, Jenny, just a as though he was a bit lost at Caulfield in the Guineas. Yes, likewise in most of his races too, Pete. Uh, his two wins, they were very, very good in Sydney prior to that, but he was very green. He's still learning. He's got plenty of ability. I think you've still got to leave him there with a good chance if he can just uh, mend his ways a little bit. Cool choice is one of John Mars, chased home Alpha here two runs ago and then came out at Caulfield and defeated Maximal. Yes, well, he's been very wide at his last couple of runs, but last start, he really did win quite convincingly at Caulfield, and he was quite wide. He defied the pattern of racing on that particular day, and I think he's going to be very hard to beat in this first race. The one I like is number four, King Ivor, to be ridden by Mick Dippin. I thought his Sydney form was pretty good, and then he came down to Caulfield and just got a little bit too far back, got back before the turn, but didn't he finish off his race in fine style? Did he ever? He really did get a bit far back on that occasion, but uh, well, maybe he just took a little while to warm, warm up on that occasion. Uh, I think he'll be running on strongly at the end of this. He can probably sit around about midfield in this, but uh, Flemington should suit him. Sober Affair number six to be ridden by Brent Stanley, the Caulfield Cup winning jockey, Caulfield Cup winning trainer Jim Mason. Well, he was three wide at his last start. He over-raced a little bit there, and uh, I, I think that he'll probably sit off the pace in this race. He's not hopeless in it if you're taking a trifecta. The Philly number eight, Saria, well, she was involved in a very rough race last week after running a terrific fifth at Caulfield the previous start. Well, that's right, and she eventually uh, did win after that messy protest there. I think it's a probably a bit more difficult for her here up against the boys, and I'd say a rough place chance at best for her. Pat Highland could be in for a big day. He's got number nine, Maximal, here with Darren Veebman in the saddle and wasn't far away from Cool Choice at Caulfield. No, not far away and out wide on that occasion, equal lead as well. Um, hard to see her tur him turning the tables on a few of the others here. Another whisper in the race, Jen, for number 11, King Midas, trained by Bart Cummings. Now, Bart brought uh, a horse to this race last year that was reasonably handy. Yes. Uh, they backed him. His name was? St. Lee. Mm. And uh, maybe he can do it with this horse. He's got the blinkers on for the first time. I think with 52 kilos, he probably gets in with a very nice lightweight chance in the race. OK, Jen, sum up the first of the carnival for us. Well, Pete, I'm going for number three here. Cool choice. I really do think he'll be very hard to beat. From number four, King Ivor and West Point. Well, I've gone for, on an each-way basis, number four, King Ivor. And I think Lord Ted's going to be hard to beat and King Midas as well. So that's what we think on the first race. Now, Daniel, take us through the totes for the first time this carnival. Certainly, Peter, the first event, the Carbine Club, and the favourite is number two, which is West Point, showing $4.70 for the win. On the total, Isaida, cool choice at $7.60. King Ivor, number four, at $4.30, is just displaced. West Point is tote favourite now. Then down to Soraya at $8.20. Number 11, King Midas at $6.60. They're the top five in the market. The best back runner, I understand, is King Midas. It certainly has shortened up a fraction and challenging King, King Ivor for favouritism. So it's the kings to the four. Pete and race won the Carbine Club. Yes, I think 
they'll both be very hard to beat. Well, that's what tote punters have made of it. I'm sure there's a huge crush in the betting ring, and one fellow we won't be able to miss, the biggest gambler in the betting ring, because he's about six foot eight, Tim Gossage. And uh, have they opened up the purse strings early, Timothy? They certainly have, Peter. They took a while to come for anything. Uh, West Point, King Ivor and King Midas all open up about the same price. But in the last five minutes, they've come for King Ivor in a big, big way. King Ivor is easily the favourite, and yes, it is the favourite on the tote also. And there is a tip around here down the ring for Surya. So it uh, could be each way odds for it. But King Ivor is all the rage in the first. So Mick Dittman's about King Ivor is the one that they want here in race one, and he's my selection. They'll run from the 1600 metre point here and they start over by the river and they've got a reasonable run to the first turn probably around 200 metres with three scratchings there's only 12 runners so most of the horses should be able to get a position and then that sweeping turn they straighten at the 450 and it's one of the longest straights in Australia it certainly has caused a few minor heart attacks over the years that's the map for the first the selections for race one and there you see them Jenny Chapman going for cool choice it's King Ivor for myself and Richard Friedman and Johnny Letts has selected West Point. So we're all set. All of the preparations are now complete and they're making their way to the stalls as the 1996 Melbourne Cup Carnival begins at Flemington. We'll take a break and be back with the opening race in just a moment. above on Derby Day. Amy Victoria Derby Day from the Whitman's Lightship. What a great scene it is looking from up there, but it's also looking absolutely superb from down on ground level. And I'm happy to say that uh, my old sparring partner, a good old mate of mine, and Roy Higgins has joined us. He's completed his duties with Sport 927 looking over the horses. It is a great scene, isn't it, Roy? What a, what a sight it is from down here, even at my level. Mm. <laughs> uh, fantastic day. It's a little bit warm down the back there where the horses are. We may see through the day a few of these horses sweating up a little bit. Uh, as the day gets on, it gets a bit warmer. But uh, I, in the first year of the horses that I had to look at going out there, I think I heard Jenny, Miss Chapman, ex-Miss Chapman, uh, mention the uh, cool choice. Gee, he did look well. I liked his run the other day when he won a cop. He's drawn barrier one. You're going to get a good sight from this horse. You'll either lead, slow them up, or sit behind. Watch him. He's not a bad horse. This fellow. I marked him on top of the two kings, King Ivor and King Midas. Both these horses look excellent going through. King Midas probably will be better in the autumn. He's an immature looking customer, but he's got the blinkers on today, JB Cummings, and the filly here, number eight, Surya. Gee, she's a nice filly, mm. this one. Look for her in the future, but don't be surprised she jumps in the money today. The best four that I found out of the yard were three, four, eight, and 11. And Good luck, Pete. You'll be joining us throughout the day when time permits, Roy. When time permits, we'll jump up here and try and help Jenny along what we see out of the yard. Good on you, mate. Dual Melbourne Cup winning jockey, Roy Higgins, will be with us throughout the day on Amy Victoria Derby Day. And there is King Ivor out behind the gates over there at the 1600 metre mark, repeating the late riding change here. Brett Preble takes the ride on three cool choice, replacing Simon Marshall. And as they get set prior to the start of this race, look at that view from up above. It really is a spectacular sight. This is a shot that is used a lot in the telecasting of English racing, and you're seeing it for the first time here at uh, Flemington over the Melbourne Cup Carnival. And Jen, doesn't it make a spectacular sight from up above? Well, not only a spectacular sight there, Pete, but uh, when there's some interference, you can really, really see it from this particular camera angle. And uh, if we do have some over the carnival, it'll be a great insight for the audience to have a look at uh, what actually goes on in a race. What about the 1,600 metres here? You'd expect in a field of 12 that most of them would have a position before the first turn? You would expect so. Flemington's such a big, sparse track. Uh, it, it normally does give most horses a chance particularly when it's in a smaller field. Well, there is King Ivor, Mick Dittman, trained by Jack Denham. So if King Ivor does happen to win, we won't be talking to the trainer because he doesn't like talking to the press, but we can talk to the jockey, Mick Dittman. Ted Ryan caught up with him before the first race. Before, but uh, he's got a lot of ability. Well, his form's very good. He, uh, his last start uh, run at Caulfield was excellent. You know, he, he got back and then on a track that probably wasn't suiting back, back uh, markers and 
he looked like he was very awkward to the corner and as the last 50, 60 metres he stretched out really well. So the miles shouldn't worry him and his horse that races on the pace, he's good and tough, very, very fit. And, uh, you know, be, be, before his previous start he, he won uh, quite convincingly at Randwick, so no, he's in the race with a good chance. Yes, if anything, the miles should be right up his alley, King Ivor. On the right of your screen there, that is West Point in the famous Gay Waterhouse colours. And that is the scene as they line into the gates. So a field of 12, first race of the carnival. Good luck, everyone. Let's go up to the commentary box with Dan Maliki and with him is Gary Willis. Thank you, Peter. They get set for the first event on a fast track. Gary, some very good horses in this race. Last year it was a race Saintly was backed off the map to win. He's since come out 12 months later and won a Cox Plate. Yes, uh, what a great go that was that day. There's a few uh, cool choice, certainly looks well. Uh, Dan, number three, from West Point, I thought he might be the improver in this field. He uh, ran in the Caulfield Guineas, it's a lot easier this race. Good late money on track for cool choice as the last couple come up to the starting stalls, run over the mile. Sober of Fair End, the landmark, will be the last two to come up to the gates. Wearing the colours that Arctic Scent has made favourites since winning the Caulfield Cup. Other colours for Sober of Fair and Brent Stanley, the winning Caulfield Cup jockey at only 17 years of age. And we're close to a start. First race of the 1996 VRC Spring Carnival. The landmark ready, the light on for the first, the Carbine Club. Gates crash back and they're off and racing. Curl Choice was one of the first to bound away. Away well was West Point with also Sue Riot, Dibbles Dane and also Sabre Affair going forward in the early part of the race. Just in behind them, Kentucky Blue from King Ivor, Monet's Cove just a little bit wide as Sabre Affair goes to the lead after 200 metres. Lord Ted back to second last early and the landmark settles at the rear. Sabre Affair wanting to get his head up a little bit when he tried to dictate uh, the, to slow down the tempo and it leads three quarters of a length Sabre Affair on West Point. A length and a quarter away, Curl Choice racing on the inside of Kentucky. Kentucky Blue, and they were followed by King Ivor, about two lengths away, then a King Midas racing in between Sue Raya, and Monet's Cove trapped out a bit wide, a length and a half to Dibbles, Dane and Maximal, on the inside Lord Ted, and one length away the landmark last, about eight lengths off the leader Sabre Affair. At the 800 metres point, Sabre Affair's a length and a quarter in front of West Point, King Ivor's always been wide, but he goes up to third, Kentucky Blue fourth, Cool Choice on the inside fifth, Monet's Cove has always been travelling three wide next, King Midas was next, but into a little bit of bother there, seemed to get checked off heels. Sue Rye is over on the inside as they turn, followed by Lord Ted. Then the landmark well back. Maximal's about fourth last. And Dibbles Dane back of the tail inside the 400. And it's West Point and King Ivor going up to tackle Sabre Affair. Cool Choice behind them. And then Monet's Cave and Kentucky Blue. King Ivor took the lead. Cool Choice back to the inside. Coming after it now though. And then Monet's Cave and Maximal. King Ivor tackled by Cool Choice which has got the run through. It's Cool Choice and King Ivor. Brett Preble and Mick Dittman. King Ivor and Cool Choice. It's going to be a bobbing go. Cool choice, King Ivor. Oh, it's close. Cool choice and King Ivor, nothing in it. Third's also close. Monet's Cove, West Point from Kentucky Blue and then Sue Raya Maximal. King Midas next and then Lord Ted Sober Affair. The landmark and Devil's Dane at the tail. I'll leave this one to you, Dan. I couldn't pick that. It uh, looked like Cool Choice was going to win. But uh, King Ivor under Mick Dippman's vigorous ride has definitely driven back. Well, I thought Cool Choice was just going to win, but... Gee, the horse that was lifting for Mick Dittman was certainly King Ivor, and this is a close go. It's just a matter of the bob of the head. 135.4 the time. Thrilling go. King Ivor probably got a neck in front, and then I'm sure Cool Choice probably got a head in front. So what a tremendous duel in the last 200 metres between Brett Preble, Cool Choice, and Mick Dittman, King Ivor. Here's the replay. Number three, the winner, Cool Choice. Number three's got it. Number three, first, number four, second, King Ivor. In a thrilling duel, two great jockeys at their brilliant best. And third, number seven, Monet's Cove. It was a great ride, uh, Dan. Uh, and Brady jumped out first, got a nice trail on the horse. I thought coming to the 400 metres, he might have been in a bit of trouble. Sober Affair was weakening on him, but he was able to sort of get out, get the run between uh, West Point, drove up inside uh, King Ivor, and uh, you know, it was a great go to the line. But it was bad luck for Simon Marshall, he was held up in traffic, but uh, you can't take any away from Brett Preble's ride. $8.10 and $2.40 for Cool Choice, who's now won two on the trot, three out of his last four. King Ivor, $1.60, and Monet's Cove, who was three wide the whole trip, third, $4.80. It was a big run. Yeah, terrific run. He's been uh, racing very well down here. I noticed uh, West Point, he uh, must have got his tongue over the bit. I noticed earlier he was at his tongue right out. OK, let's go to John Letts, the first winning rider of the carnival, Brett Preble. Yeah, Danny, and we've got Brett Preble here. Brett picked up the ride that uh, Simon Marshall held up in traffic. Brett, you had a nice run throughout? Had a terrific run, you know, the barrier helps. And 
And I just sort of had to wait there for a little bit while, uh, while I got a run and uh, when I asked him to go forward, he really let down good. Brett, this horse, he get 1,800 to 2,000 metres, you think? Did he relax in the run? He relaxed beautiful today. I sort of dug him a little bit early, holding position. I said, come back, boy, and he just come back and relax beautiful and went to the line nice. He showed a lot of fight, didn't he, when that other horse got you? He did. He, he sort of the other horse got there, and when I got to him, he kicked a bit again, and my bloke done a good job to fight him off. Yeah, congratulations, Brett. Thank you. Johnny Letts and Brett Preble. Yeah, it's short half-head decision there. It was just a matter of the bob of the head, and... Uh, Cool choice has got the money. What a thrilling way to start proceedings, Peter, Peter Donning on the Carbine Club Stakes, getting down to an inch margin. Yeah, it was and just a cool. bob of the head, Dan, wasn't it? Uh, just it was. a matter of which head was up and which head was down.